All right, good afternoon. It's been about a month since my last upload, so I think I'll shift gears and do a piece of Latin curriculum. This has been requested by at least one viewer, and so if you can barely see it, it's Henley. Come on, focus, focus. It's Henley's Latin. This is a Catholic text. Henley was a Catholic priest, a Jesuit, if my memory serves. This is the first year book. This is the only copy that I own, the first year copy. It does have a companion grammar, and at various points throughout this book, the grammar will be referenced as a separate resource. So if you get this book, you also need to get its grammar, the, the separate grammar book. It's been in print for some time, so that should be pretty easy to pick up. This book was not expensive. I think it was under $20. Um, it is Catholic. It's saturated with Catholicism throughout, but it also touches on classical themes like Caesar's, Gallic Wars, etc. Um, its philosophy is very straightforward. Uh, you could say very similar to that of Wheelix. Uh, the author, if this, if this will focus, the author does not accept the principle that mastery should be subordinated to the presentation, especially in the first year, of material interesting in itself and possessed of some utilitarian value. So the author does not consider Latin to have a utilitarian value. It has an intellectual value. That's an important distinction. Very unlike the Ecce Romani or the Cambridge Latin course. Also, below, the formal rather than the functional or direct method is favored in the learning of forms, which means that Forms should be learned explicitly, that is, by way of a chart. Organize them according to the chart, make sure that you can reproduce the chart, know what everything means, know what everything does, and only then the paradigms are to be thoroughly memorized and then worked into active mastery by immediate and abundant exercise. So the forms are not to be learned by exercise, they're simply to be reinforced, they're to be memorized um, explicitly. So that's very different than modern educational theory, but modern educational theory doesn't produce very good Latinists. And by my experience, this method presented in Henley's most certainly does. So if you look at the table of contents, it's all very boilerplate stuff. You will notice that it moves very fast. Um, perhaps a different order than Wheelix, but still you're getting quite a bit, almost as though you're drinking from the fire hydrant. Um, by lesson six, no, it's, no, by lesson five, you're already learning the fifth declension. Fourth and fifth declension doesn't come in until maybe year two in a standard textbook. Uh, this front loads it to uh, the beginning of the book. This front loads all of your declensions and then all the other particulars, all the cases who you see, the accusative case, genitive case, um, Let's see, uh, third declension, rules for rules for nouns like lex and pars, um, if, it, the various functions of the noun, so uh, subject, direct object, lesson three, number four, appositives. Um, basically, it takes, it takes a heading like noun, and then the book will fully elucidate everything about the noun before it moves on to something like verb. So it's in quite a different order than you would expect. Uh, the result is that by the middle of the book, not even the middle of the book, maybe like a third of the way through the book, you will already get very large segments of Latin to translate. Let's see if I can find an example of that. Come on. I'll find it. Get very, very large, relatively large sections. So we might be not even a quarter through the book, and already exercise 102, you're given this to translate. Quid videtis in pictora? What do you see in the picture? In pictora videtis agmen romanorum. I can barely, I can barely read this with the way the the print is blurred. Let me, let me just read off the page. In pictura videtis agmen romanum. So in the, picture, in the picture you all see a, a line of Romans. The Roman battle line. Agmen longum est, sed videtis partem agminis. So the line is long, 
that is the row of soldiers is long, but you only see part of the line. Videtis signa legionum et gladios militum. You all see the sign of the legion and the swords of the soldiers. So, like, it's very basic, but note how long it is. If, if you're dealing with Wheelix Latin, you never deal with a text this long so early. You're dealing with individual sentences. And it's not until, you might say, halfway through Latin 2, you begin to get things about this long. Uh, so it moves very fast. It expects a lot of the student, and it expects the student to memorize things. It's also saturated, not just with the classics, but with Catholicism generally. So let's see if I can... It's a very religious text. I'll try to give you a good example. All right, let's see. So here, here in Latin is a dialogue between uh, a, a Roman judge and a Christian on trial. So they, it's, a, it's a mock back and forth, but you get the context. Somebody's on trial for being a Christian. Um, see some other ones. There's some translated prayers in here. Here's one. Here's one, probably a picture of one of the early martyrs. Uh, it says, Romani amici Christianorum non erant. The Romans were not the friends of the Christians. And then you get, you get a translation. Let's see. Uh, omnes omnes boni orant, sed omnes male non orant. Uh, all good men pray, but all men, all men are not evil. Christiani and nomine Christi orant. The Christians, they pray in the name of Christ. Rex bonus pro regno et militibus orat. Uh, the good king, he prays for the kingdom and for the soldiers. Um, so, you get, you get these little... Uh, these little um, spiritual lessons on prayer, and at other points you get Catholic doctrine. So let's see. There's one. There's one good example of that earlier on in the text. If I can find it. It's been a while since I've been through this book. Oh, here, here's one. Here's one. Wait one second. There we go. There we go. All right, so uh, the language of papal teaching. So this is a brief discussion on the politics and the polity of the Roman Catholic Church that um, papal declarations typically written in Latin, then they're distributed to priests all around the world for whom Latin is a at least a second language, and they, they then translate it into their native tongue, and the fact that Latin was the singular language of the church for so many years meant that uh, you could have a lot, of, a lot of unity because everybody was gathered around that one language, and that language had long-established meaning uh, concerning, its, um, concerning its vocabulary. So there are, there are instances of Catholic doctrine, little spiritual discourses for the student about prayer, um, discussions of Christ, little Christological lessons... Let's see if I can find one of those. Uh, the, the thing to keep in mind is that this is an extremely uh, religious text and that it is unashamedly and unapologetically uh, Catholic. And so if any of that offends you, then this is not your book. If you teach in a public school, then you can use this, but probably only very judiciously, meaning... You can use excerpts from it, provided that they focus on the classics, um, provided that they focus on the grammar, but you would not want to be caught giving a discourse on Catholic doctrine in a public school setting. Uh, that would result in legal trouble, maybe. Maybe. So, 
overall, the book is really good. The re book is really good. If you're Catholic, the book is exceptional because you kind of killed two birds with one stone. If you have if you have youngsters at home who need to be catechized as well as taught their Latin lesson, well, you can do both through this book. Uh, this book also serves as a primer for reading uh, maybe the greatest document in Latin, which is the Latin Vulgate. So if you can work through, you know, book one and book two of this series, then you're probably ready to jump into the Vulgate. Um, honestly, it's, it's a crying shame that the Vulgate cannot be used more broadly. The Vulgate is, I think, the best document to wet your feet when it comes to Latin study. But a second best book would be this Henley's Latin. Should be a lot of Vulgate in here. Certainly a lot of Catholicism in here. So I like it. I cannot say that I have used this extensively. I have perused it. I've drawn things from it. Um, but I have never used this in a classroom. I will say one thing. I've talked about the contents of the book. I will, I will say one thing about the quality of the material. You can see what happened to this poor spine. Let me tell you, I, I take care of books. I don't break spines on books. Let me tell you how that happened. I, need, I didn't have a bookmark, and so I was open up to a particular page, and I didn't have a bookmark, and so I just laid the book down like this. All I did, that's all I did. I laid the book down, and the spine broke. I did not force it. It just happened. So I do not like the quality of the book. If I remember correctly, one of the reviews on Amazon said that uh, they bought the book, but they immediately had it rebound. And when you rebind these books, typically you take it to, to a bookbinder who will then shave off the back, they'll shave off the glue, and then bring it down to the pages so that all the pages can be separated. And then they apply their own binding, either by reapplying the glue, or in some cases, drilling holes uh, through the spine, and then using like a spiral or a ring binding to put the pages together. So I use tape binding. That's what I use. I use uh, packaging tape. That's my, my preferred binding method to make sure that the thing stays together and doesn't fall apart. So if you can tolerate the binding, this is, and you can tolerate uh, the heavy emphasis on, re on religion, this is a really good book. Um, I, I do recommend it. I think that this is, you could call this the Catholic version of Wheelix. Wheelix being uh, more universal in its appeal. Uh, if you if you want something more expressly Catholic, then you can jump into Henley's and feel right at home. Uh, I do I do like the methodology. I think the methodology here is the only way to learn Latin really well. Um, and you can argue with me about that in the comment section if you like. But this was Henley's Latin. Hopefully that was helpful to you. If so, let me know. If you want to argue with me, you can do that in the comment section as well. And uh, subscribe. You can like the video. And I'll keep these coming probably at a rate of once a month. Talk to you all later. Bye.